Hi, welcome to Sabbath School Daily, where we have been studying from this lesson right here, Psalms. This week we've studied from the first lesson of this quarter, which has the title, How to Read the Psalms, and today is Final Thought Friday, where we wrap up the week's lesson and think about what we've learned. Today's lesson provides several really good pieces of information about the book of Psalms itself. And so I'd like to read you these facts and perhaps comment a little bit on the implications of these facts in our life. Look at what it says. The book of Psalms consists of 150 Psalms, which are grouped into five books. Book one goes from Psalms one to 41. Book two goes from Psalm 42 to 72. Book three goes from Psalm 73 to 89. Book four goes from Psalm 90 to 106. And book five goes from Psalm 107 to 150. The five book division of the Psalter is an early Jewish tradition that parallels the five book division of the Pentateuch. The book of Psalms provides evidence of some already existing collections of Psalms. The Korite collections, which is Psalm 42 through 49, 84, 85, 87, and 88. The Asaphite collection that goes from Psalm 73 to 83. The Song of the Ascents, which goes from Psalms 120 to 134. And the Hallelujah Psalms that go from Psalm 111 to 118, and then 146 through 150. Psalm 72 verse 20 bears witness to a smaller collection of David Psalms. So you can see that there are various divisions within the book of Psalms. Remember, this is a very well-organized book. This was thought out. It wasn't just mashed together. So you'll see that there are different Psalms from different people, from different groups of people, for different moments, Psalms that are used in different occasions. This was all very thought out. The lesson goes on to say, while most Psalms are associated with the time of King David and early monarchy, 10th century BC, the collection of Psalms continued to grow through the following centuries, the divided monarchy, the exile, and the post-exilic period. It is conceivable that the Hebrew scribes under the leadership of Ezra combined the existing smaller collections of Psalms into one book when they worked on establishing the services of the new temple. So that tells us that this book is extremely historical as well. There's a lot that goes into not only their writing, but the moment, the time in which they're being written and used. The nation of Israel went through many different moments, many different periods. You had the United Kingdom, you had the Divided Kingdom, you had the moment where only the Kingdom of Judah had survived. And so some of these Psalms speak to very specific historical moments in the history of the children of Israel. Finally, the last paragraph says, the fact that the scribes consolidated the book of Psalms does not take away from their divine inspiration. The scribes, like the psalmists, were devoted servants of God and their work was directed by God. The divine human nature of the Psalms is comparable to the union of the divine and the human in the incarnated Lord Jesus. The lesson then quotes from the book, The Great Controversy, page eight, and it says, but the Bible, with its God-given truths expressed in the language of men, presents a union of the divine and the human. Such a union existed in the nature of Christ, who was the Son of God and the Son of Man. Thus, it is true of the Bible, as it was of Christ, that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. May the Lord bless you. I hope that you grew in the study of this week's lesson. It was an incredible lesson because it laid a foundation as to how we're going to be reading this book as we move on this quarter. Knowing how to read the Psalms is as important as reading it itself, because if we read it the wrong way, then what's even the point of reading it? And so learn these lessons, go deeper. There's a lot more involved here. Context, friends, especially when reading the Bible, is everything. Knowing what you're reading, Who's writing it? Who's the target audience? When is it being written? Why is it being written? All of these things combined, put together, give us a great canvas of what is happening in the biblical narrative and how that information, how that content transcends time and converges to our experience today. Please remember, comment down below. I love hearing from you. And also remember to like, to share, and to subscribe to our videos. We release one every day. And I hope to see you again here tomorrow for another Sabbath School Daily.